Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming, uh, taking time, especially on a public holiday, to come uh, and listen to this charama. Uh, I really appreciate your presence because I know it's a long weekend and many people are away. And then, you know, after a long weekend, when you come back, you want to rest because tomorrow you go back to work. So I really appreciate your presence as the host uh, in Subang Jaya. I thank you for coming, especially those who have come here very early to take front seat. Thank you very much. Now, um, when I was told to check our status, whether or not we are banned from entering Sarawak, I checked the status and they say Ruju immigration. I actually didn't believe it. Uh, because I didn't believe a small politician like me, representing Subang Jaya, nothing to do with Sarawak, can actually be bad. So we decided to, you know, uh, have to try to enter Sarawak. And then we found out that on the 22nd of April, that's actually the uh, Passover celebration. The Christians celebrate the Passover celebration. And so a church in Cebu actually invited me to go over to celebrate the Passover together with them. And I was supposed to preach that night uh, to the congregation in Cebu. Now, when I went there with my assistant, uh, true enough, they saw my IC, they keen straight away, they said, you know, go into the room. Uh, I went there, I knew that I was going to be set, I was prepared. I was prepared, you know, if it's going to happen, then I will come back. But what I didn't expect, was the fact that they made me pay for my own bill, my own air ticket to come back. And it's not cheap. They told me you have to pay a thousand, a thousand ringgit to, to, to come back. And then I told my friends from the DAP, I said, they are making me pay, how, how, how? So everybody's messaging me and said, don't pay, don't one message, don't pay, that's not, we are, we are not supposed to pay. They are, if they want to send you back, they buy for you, your air ticket. But I was under so much pressure because when the moment I landed, there was only 40 minutes before the next flight was to fly out again. And so they pressured me, they say, you know, everybody is in the aeroplane waiting for you. And me being nice, I just didn't want people to wait for me. And so I, I really didn't know what to do. And then they asked me, do you have the money or not now? Pay, pay. Mass officers told me. I happened to have that cash because I actually didn't bring my ATM card to Cebu. And I have about 1,000, about 200 ringgit in my wallet. Now, I'm not like somebody, if there's money in my account, I will say I have it. I won't lie and say I don't know that money has entered my bank account. I'm not like Najib. So I say, yes, I have the money in my wallet, but I don't want to pay. And they say, you have no choice. The plane is waiting. Everybody is waiting for you. So three to two guys from, two officers from Mars and then immigration can say, they are all waiting for you. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So I actually took the cash and I paid. And when I went in, I was escorted into the plane. It, I actually felt quite embarrassed. I know some of you will feel, you know, never mind, like, you know you're doing something right. But I actually felt embarrassed because these are uniform officers escorting me. And I'm not there as a criminal. I am the Speaker of the State Assembly. I represent an institution. You know, when I show them, I say, look, I am not here for a DAP event. I am here for a Passover celebration. This is the invitation from church and this is my speaker's card. They say, sorry, this is Arahan Pihak Bukwasa Nagri. So I say, give me a reason why I'm banned. Cannot. No, ex no reason given whatsoever. They say, we are just following instruction. I'm so sorry. They keep saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And so I had to go. Now, imagine after paying 1,000, 13 ringgit. I went into the plane. The plane is not even full and they charged me so expensive for the air ticket. I, my heart, I was really, really upset because with 1,000, I could buy a lot, a lot of baju kurung, a lot, a lot of things, right? And I, I was so upset. I say, you know, I, I, we need to get an explanation. We, we need to pursue this. And of course, I'm not the only one who has been banned. A lot of people have been banned. Now, this idea of banning people, I understand what's stated in the federal constitution. I understand that some people are dangerous, like terrorists. But we are not terrorists. We are elected representatives. I actually don't go there on my own. I represent the people of Subang Jaya. This is the dangerous person that you elected to represent you. So if I am bad, right, it speaks a lot about your character as well, that you elected someone like me. 
So this cannot be okay. We cannot sit back and say, this is okay, we'll accept it, Adnan has the power to do it. It is purely abusing immigration laws. We cannot sit around and say it's okay. Tony Ching, MP for Kulai, six months pregnant, walked into the immigration and they banned her. Gobin Singh, I, I don't even know how Gobin has... I don't know what you said that made Adnan upset, but I, I cannot believe that Gobin... Gobin is also banned. He's a lawyer. He's representing his clients banned. Tony Bob, you all know why he's banned. Because he's been speaking up against Najib on MDB and we all know who Adnan works for. Khalid Samad. I don't know, I'll let him explain to you later. Khalid Samad has actually offended a lot of people. <laughs> but, you know, I really believe, I really believe that every person who has been bad Actually, they have a message for Sarawak that Adnan does not want the people to hear. And that's why when I came back, I told Tony, Tony, we must do something here. That we cannot just sit back and watch and do nothing. And I said, there are Sarawakians working in Kuala Lumpur. They have not flown back yet. They will only probably fly back towards uh, the end of next weekend. We cannot sit around. We, we have to do something. Let's just do something. And Tony said, okay, let's, uh, do you think the Sarawakians will come out and say, we cannot just sit back and do nothing. And so tonight, I know there are Sarah audience here because they came up to me and they said, uh, thank you, and they, one man, one gentleman came up to me and said, so sorry, my chief minister treated you like that. <laughs> but you know, like I said, I know everybody is tired. Everybody knows that Anand is going to win the elections. You know, when you see the battle is so big, right, and you cannot even enter the field, they, you, they, they ban you. You know, under the law, you actually cannot ban someone for political reason. But this whole thing, this entire banning thing, it is political. Yet, he went ahead to ban, and he went ahead to do it. Why? Because he knows he can get away with it. He knows that if he bans enough people, Malaysians will forget about it eventually. Malaysians will accept it as this is normal. But friends, we cannot allow this abuse of immigration law to be normal. It is not normal. You have to go back tonight and talk about it on your Facebook because your friends are reading your post. You need to talk about it, tell your friends that it is not okay. Today, the he can ban opposition members. Tomorrow, if he doesn't like what the school teacher is teaching, against corruption, against bribery in school, he will ban school teachers. If he doesn't like what the newspaper is writing, he will ban the newspaper. If he doesn't like the judge for making a decision that is bad, he can ban the judge. He will ban the lawyer. He has really done it. He has banned one of the top lawyers in the country. He has done it in your face. And he knows he can get away with it. You want to challenge him in court? By the time you challenge, the election is over. So we cannot sit back and say, okay, we just allow him to abuse. Because this is a law breaker. Somebody who breaks the law, even before you give him any mandate, will continue to abuse and break more laws when you give him full mandate to govern in Sarawak. So friends, please urge your Sarawakian friends, your colleagues, if they don't have money to buy a ticket to go back, fly them back. There are things that we have to do now to urge them to go back and cast their votes. It is very important because what, uh, what happens in Sarawak will affect us here in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so um, I also want to share with you uh, how this abuse of immigration law is affecting even ordinary folks, not politicians in Sarawak. Um, about one and a half years ago, a girl from Sabah, a young girl from Sabah, uh, came to do internship with me. She then got married to a Sarawakian and she lives in Miri now with her husband and they have uh, a baby who's a few months old. After having a holiday, she went back to her kampong in Sabah for about a week and a few days ago, she flew back to Miri. This is her home uh, with her baby and her mother. And guess what immigration did? Immigration gave her a slip and said, you have to leave Sarawak by the 5th of May.
because they treated her like the volunteers or the politicians or uh, members from the DAP. Fifth May, you have to leave, and she she was screaming and, and she she was very very upset because she said, "This is my home. How can you ban me? This is my baby. She's married to a Sarawakian, and they ban her. They say you." Come, you come in now, but fifth of May you have to leave. And when she asked for a reason, they said no. Peha Arahan Peha Bukwasi agreed. This is affecting a family. She's not a politician, you know. She's not a politician now. You have to ask yourself, why are they sending the volunteers out on fifth of May? Why? What's happening after fifth of May? Two days after fifth of May, seven May. That's the day Sarah Watkins go and vote for a new state government. The people who are flying in are volunteers. They are polling and counting agents. They go into schools and streams to sit there to monitor and make sure no phantom voters come out to vote. When polling and counting agents are being sent home before polling day on the 5th of May, okay, we can expect a lot of dirty businesses to take place in all these voting centers. And that's why I am making an appeal. I know this is on Uba TV to the Sarawakians back there. You know, you have to rise up, you have to take ownership of your state election and become polling and counting agents because our volunteers will all be sent back. Uh, Tony is going to tell you more about Tan Kok Wai later. What happened to Tan Kok Wai already entered the state and how they went after him. Okay, so this cannot be okay. Now, I just want to, I, I just want to share with you how I feel. Huh? I know not everybody agrees with me, but I still have to say it because I feel strongly about this. In our quest to rebuild Malaysia, to build this nation strong again, we cannot allow every state to go about building walls around that state. Adnan is making a call for Sarawakians. He said, I will protect Sarawak from UMNO. I won't allow UMNO to enter. For as long as you make me chief minister, I will look after Sarawak for Sarawakians only. Do you know it is shocking that so many people believe him? that he is actually protecting Sarawak from UMNO. Do you know who, who, who is the lifeline for Najib in Putrajaya? It is Adnan Satin and his party. He has five ministers from PBB sitting in the cabinet. Five ministers out of a bloated cabinet seated there endorsing him and supporting him for all his decisions regarding 1MDB. If he withdraws his officers, if he withdraws his his ministers from Putrajaya, which I think we should dare him to do it because, you know, he said, I will protect Sarawak from Sarawak, first from Amno. But he knows, he knows that Amno is bad for Sarawak. But he allows the rest of Malaysia to suffer under Amno. And he said that he will, if he, he will quit if Amno sets up bunches there. There's only one. There's only room, there's only space, enough space in Sarawak for one corrupt party. And that's why PBB knows if AMNO comes in, AMNO will be competing with PBB. The other thing about um, Anand Satim is this. Many people say, you know, this is a new leader. He is different from Pak Moore. He is different from Taib Mahmoud. He's a clean leader. Uh, and he will be able to lead Sarawak differently. So I told my intern, I said, I don't believe whatever he's saying. Can you, can you please go and, I told my staff, can you please go and do a research on Anand Satim? You don't even have to dig far. You just go to his official website. His entire portfolio is written there. Back in 1985, when I was only six years old, today I'm 37, uh, 30 years ago, Adnan Satim was already an elected representative in the State Assembly of Sarawak. He was minister for land development. So when all the illegal loggings and all that, all those things, activities were happening in Sarawak, he knew full well, this is the Minister for Land Development. How do you think he's going to do things differently now? 30 years ago, sorry, Assistant Minister, and then 1987, he became Minister for Land Development, Minister for Social Development, Sarawak, Minister for Agriculture and Food Industry, Sarawak. This is a man very experienced, you know, under Taib Mahmoud. And the best part 
in 2010, he became special advisor in the chief minister's office. He was advising Taib Mahmoud all along. When Taib Mahmoud was, you know, uh, leading Sarawak. And then for four years, 2010 to 2014, Adnan Satim was minister in the chief minister's office and minister for special functions. I don't know what these special functions were, but the point is, he was Taib Mahmoud's advisor. He was handpicked by Taib Mahmoud. And do you think Taib Mahmoud, after ruling Sarawak for so long, would appoint somebody who is different from him? When you appoint a successor, you will make sure that you appoint somebody who believes in what you do. Taib Mahmoud is such a man for... No, sorry, Adnan Satim is such a man for Taib Mahmoud. And now he's not just there helping Taib, he's also there helping Najib. The rest of Malaysia don't want Najib. But Taib, um, you see, it's so confusing because to me they are all one and the, one and the same. Adnan, Adnan is saying Sarawak for Najib. If, um, if UMNO is not good for Sarawak, UMNO is not good for the rest of us. You cannot have, we cannot elect selfish leaders who don't think for the rest of Malaysia when you put them in position of power. Anand Satim is the lifeline for UMNO. Okay? And therefore, I know many people say Anand is going to win big in Sarawak. We have the opportunity to deny him a big mandate. One of the big, one of the best ways, everybody asks me, so what are you going to do about this ban, this ban? One of the best ways to show Anand Satim that you do not endorse him abusing laws or breaking laws is to deny him two-third majority in the house, is to not give him a strong mandate, show him that it's not acceptable to break the laws. Now, maybe there are not many Sarawakins here tonight, I don't know. Okay, we have not done a count, but I'm certain that all of you have friends who are from Sarawak in your church, in your office. You have to tell them that this putting up shield, Sarawak for Sarawakins only, is actually not healthy for nation building. Because that is actually how Amno behaves. Amno tells the Malays that other people want to take away their rights and privileges. You know, we will safeguard your rights. Amno does that. Okay? And then they use religion as well. And now you have the third R, region. Separating people not just by race, religion, but region. And Anand Satim comes and says, Semenanjung people, I will guard Sarawak for you. I will defend. Now, I understand that Sarawakians feel that, oh no, they have been shortchanged by the federal government. They don't have all the resources that they are supposed to have or the infrastructure that they are supposed to have. But they must ask themselves, who have been ruling? Sarawak for the last 50 years. This is, I'm talking about half a century. Five decades. Prote Anand wants to protect Sarawak from who? How can it be from the DAP? He wants to protect them from themselves, he claims. It doesn't make sense. These are the people who have been in power in Sarawak and the very same people who robbed the people of Sarawak is now telling them that I will safeguard and I'll make sure nobody comes in so that they can continue to do whatever they're doing. And you know, the, the, the one thing that made me really, really upset is when the Deputy Prime Minister can walk around telling the people of Sarawak, if you work for BN, I will give you 500000 to build a school, for the school. If you work for BN, we promise you development. If Barisan National has been doing their job, providing development for Sarawak. There is no need for people of Subang Jaya to do fundraising for Impian Sarawak, to go and build bridges, to go and make sure that they have clean water, okay, and to go and provide education camp and free clinic in Sarawak. But we must not be weary in doing good. I asked and I appeal to you, please, when you hear Sarawakin say, you know, we need to protect our state from some Menanjung people like you, you have to tell them we must start thinking and behaving like one nation. The more we put up walls, the more we'll be left behind. You know, Adnan's manifesto, one of the things that he wants to do, he said that he has managed to convince the federal government by 2018, 90% of the school teachers in Sarawak must be Sarawakins only. 90%. 
and I know there are good volunteer teachers who are being sent home simply because they are from Ipoh, from Selangor. Good teachers teaching in interior Sarawak, wanting to bless the community there, are being sent home because of this 90% for Sarawakians only. We must start thinking, imagine if every state in Malaysia starts behaving like that. Imagine if Azmin Ali said, I will not allow Anan Satim to land in Subang Airport. Or I will not allow them to use our highway. We cannot behave like that. What if another state rises up and say, all the jobs here are only for Johor only? We cannot. There are so many Sarawakians living and they have settled here in Subang Jaya and we accept all of them as part of our community because we are all from one nation. We are all Malaysians. So it is time. Please, we cannot endorse something like that. We cannot endorse an insecure leader and allow him to put up walls and, and, and build, you know, um, all these walls around Sarawak in the name of protection for the people of Sarawak. You have a job tonight, I appeal to you, that you will continue to spread this message to all your friends. Uh, and I know that by the, by the end of this year, uh, people foresee that some of our leaders will be in prison, will be charged. Um, Rafizi Ramli is really looking at imprisonment in his face. This is your second, your second level uh, of leadership, and it's very real. The charge that they have um, thrown upon him has no fine provision, it's only imprisonment. So he has to be either acquitted or the alternative would be to go to prison. We already lost Anwar Ibrahim in prison. We cannot allow Rafizi Rami to go. And the people here who have access to information, you have to continue. Don't, don't be tired in doing good. Because I believe one day, one step at a time, one state at a time, I believe when you have Mahade also campaigning together with us, I will really believe the next general elections, we're going to shake the rural area. I believe things will change and I believe more states will fall from the grip of UMNO. And I ask that these, these Sarawak elections, we have, to, we have to make some inroads, we have to get more seats and we have to make sure that Adnan Satin does not get a full mandate. Thank you so much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.